Hello, everyone. I'm Everton de Oliveira. I'm the president of this Congress, and I have the honor and the pleasure to present you the today's panel, Water for Future Generations, the urgent need to increase managed aquifer recharge, a very important theme. And we have the, the honor to receive uh, four important people who has very important message to you. They're very generous to offer their knowledge and their expertise to our audience, okay? So welcome everybody to our second webinar in October. Adding to the free sessions of this first part of the Groundwater World, World Congress, a joint achievement of IAH, International Association of Hydrogeologists, also the Latin American Association of Hydrogeology, and ABAS, the Brazilian Association of Hydrogeology. We started with eight panel sessions in September, where our Congress, presidential co Congress, would happen due to COVID, we could not hold the presidential session. So we had an online session with eight panels in September, where we reached more than 10,000 views, a good number. Should you miss them, please access our ABAS, the Brazilian Association channel on YouTube. We'd like to remind you that we offer two panel sessions per month until August, 2021, when we will host the presidential part of our event. Bye-bye, COVID. One panel more market-related, sorry, one panel more market-related and the other more scientific, like today. Please follow ABAS on social media and stay informed, or else IAH and our SUD social media as well will give you information for the next presentations. We have 900 plus participants on thematic on 10 thematic WhatsApp groups, and our app has been downloaded by 400 plus participants. We have a specific app for the event. This always growing numbers are a proof of the successful digital strategy to create the largest groundwater community in the world. We would like to thank our sponsors, supporters, and expositors who allow this great event to take place in Brazil. Main sponsor, ANA, Agência Nacional de Águas e Saneamento Básico. Support, Comitê da Bacia Hidrográfica do Rio São Francisco, AGB Peixe Vivo. Exhibitors, Altri, Bodega do Poço, Chicago Numeric, Ebara, LG, Maxi Água, The Groundwater Project, CRI Bombas, Lepono, Aragon Sondagens, Clean Environment, Franklin Electric, Pazi Hidrometria, Perfuratrizes DTH, Agência Peixe Vivo, ALS, Brain, Eurofins, G Hidromonitoramento, GLP Laboratórios, Exis, In Situ do Brasil, PRD Rigs, Triune, Vapor Solutions, Water Services and Technologies. Ooh. Thank you that we have a long list to support our hydrogeology group. We'll have four short presentations today, followed by a round table where the viewers participating, participate sending questions to the speakers. The questions may be sent by our app, please download if you don't have it, or directly on YouTube. This session has simultaneous translations into Portuguese and Spanish, and they are also available on YouTube directly. Please make sure you direct your questions to one of our guests, okay? Thank you. Now, I have the honor to bring you Dr. Dinesh Singhal, president of the IAH Indian National Chapter. He's going to talk about how India has become the country with more monitored aquifer recharge systems in the world. A very nice achievement. Dinesh Singhal is a PhD in hydrogeology with a total work experience of 47 years, including 37 years teaching and research in IAT work in India. His expertise in hydrogeology and groundwater geophysics has been widely recognized for his great achievements. 
Thank you, Dr. Xingo. Your turn, please. And just one reminder, I'm, uh, if you don't mind, I'm not gonna refer to all of us as doctors because we're all doctors here. So I'll take the, the, the license to, to, to call you by your names. Is that okay for you? Thank you. So please, Vanesh, you may unmute your phone. Share your screen. Yes, share your screen. And the show is all yours. Yes. Uh, shall I start? Yes, please. Yes, Here. thank you, thank you. So the topic of my presentation today is how India has become the country with more monitored aquifer charge systems in the world. And uh, thank you for a nice introduction given by Professor Everton. And uh, next slide. So as you can see that Indian scenario in groundwater, there are annual expect extractable groundwater of the order of 393 billion cubic meters whereas groundwater caters major share of water demand. India is the largest freshwater withdrawing country in the world, more than combined usage by the US and China. There are almost 20 million wells extracting water with free or subsidized power supply and about 249 billion cubic meters of water is extracted every year and 89% of extracted groundwater is consumed by agriculture sector. Now, for monitoring the programs for the groundwater scenario in the country, we have got technology-based monitoring in which the Central Groundwater Board, which is the apex groundwater agency in India, that takes the lead and uh, for that, the National Aquifer Mapping Program has been launched. And then the, this National Aquifer Mapping Program started in 2012. And the data from this National Aquifer Mapping Program, it is supported by 20, more than 22,000 observation wells, uh, including over 16,000 dug wells and more than 6,000 piezometers. So information on pre-monsoon and post-monsoon fluctuation on the groundwater storage helps to prioritize and rationalize the usage. We are also having the monitoring of the groundwater situation using satellite technology because National Remote Sensing Center of ISRO, that is in India's space research organization, has prepared nationwide groundwater prospects map under National Rural Drinking Water program. And using this, groundwater resources were delineated for drinking within radius of 1.5 kilometer, covering for all inhabitations using IRS, 1C, 1D, and resource set satellite data on 1 is to 50,000 scale. Uh, am I audible to all the people here? I hope. Okay, good. Thank you. So this is also uh, supported by GRACE satellite of NASA, where using the gravity differences, changes in groundwater storage, they can be estimated. The MAR programs, as you are all aware, we, in India, we are using the term artificial recharge for this. So artificial recharge programs, they are comprised of the surface water spreading, as well as subsurface practices. Surface water spreading, there is contour or bonding or gully kind of things on the first and second order streams, whereas on the further down streams, second and third order streams are having percolation tanks in the larger area, which are supported by cement plugging. The subsurface practices, they include the injection wells, the recharge shafts or trenches, 
dug well recharge and injection wells they can use the normal gravity head or pressure injection but besides this there are water conservation structures also which are made up of surface water to arrest the base flow through weirs it is controlled and then ground water in discharge areas where base flow is generated is is controlled by subsurface dikes or ground water escape so that ground water cannot escape the monitoring as mechanism of water levels and water quality they are of prime importance in the artificial recharge and it greatly helps in identifying the method of artificial recharge the network of observation wells normally it should be adjacent to the recharge facility at a sufficient distance from the recharge site to observe composite effects and near the limits of hydrological boundaries and the severe the surface water bodies are hydrologically connected with the water recharge it is advisable to monitor the water level profiles of both surface and ground water now in this connection tracers are found to be very useful in the marketing the area benefited by the artificial charge common tracers uh tracers are tritium then rhodomine b fluorescent dye and environmental isotopes in assessing the extent and efficiency of recharge structures water quality monitoring it forms a major part in case of injection wells because the composition of native aquifer or native water in the aquifer and the recharge water is important because sometimes it can lead to prevent uh, prevention of uh, uh, clogging of wells and aquifer due to excessive precipitation so this is very important part and wherever treated water waste water is used for recharge a careful monitoring is required for to avoid any possibility of contamination through a network of monitoring wells now how to do the impact assessment impact assessment of the recharge projects it will be including the phenomena of rise in ground water level due to additional recharge to ground water the ground water structures in the benefited zones of recharge gain sustainability to provide water in lean months particularly when there is water shortage the cropping pattern in the benefited zone may undergo marked changes and due to increase in soil moisture green vegetation will also be increased in the area of recharge and the quality of groundwater will also improve due to dilution besides this the scheme will generate the indirect benefits in terms of decrease in soil erosion and improvement in fauna and flora actually what are the main rainwater harvesting and mar projects during various five year plans by central groundwater board in india central groundwater board the apex groundwater agency in our country it has implement, implemented demonstrative rainwater harvesting and artificial recharge project during various five year plans starting from eighth plan eighth five year plan started in 1992 and there were 14 rainwater harvesting and recharge of groundwater structures implemented in nine states of the country and in this a total of 62 artificial charge structures were constructed which included percolation tanks recharge wells washer treatment check dams dikes and rainwater harvesting and the cost was about 30, 32 million indian rupees implementation of these schemes led to an annual recharge of 4 million cubic meter of ground water now during the ninth plan at the end of eighth plan between the period of 1998 to 2003 a, another this thing was continued and in which 165 recharge was taken up in 25 states of the country and the various structures like percolation tanks check dams recharge wells and recharge shafts 
subsurface dikes and tidal lakes they were constructed under this scheme in addition to roof rain top rain water harvesting roof top rain water sorry now the implementation of this scheme also resulted in annual recharge of large quantity of ground water in the following period between 2006 and 2008 that is the 10th plan period there was this program was continued and they were in, implemented in eight identified areas in various in fact mostly southern states of the country in the peninsular part and about 197 structures were constructed in this five year plan and priority was here given to having over exploited ground water areas having over exploited ground water resources and the implementation result, resulted in the charge of about 2 mcm of ground water but the largest the play uh, project of artificial recharge took place in 11th plan between the year 2009 to 2014 and here in there were priority areas which are the peninsular areas hard rock areas of our country where the water was showing a steep decline in the ground water levels over 133 demonstrative recharge projects costing about 1000 million rupees were approved for construction of almost 16000 that means 1660 artificial charge structures in 22 states of the country and the anticipated annual charge is quite huge to the order of 55.2 million cubic meters now just to illustrate the the presentation i have selected a case study of sidpur in patan district of gujarat which is a leading state in our country where ground water recharge programs have been undertaken this is a over exploited block of, of the gujarat state and uh, there was a famous sun temple in this uh, uh, in this area only and the cost approved was of the order of 150 lakhs that means about 15 million rupees and the, in the type and number of structures were 20 recharge tubes in single program in the single project and but they it was also supported by six piezometers for monitoring monitoring and you can see the plan which is showing the position of recharge tubes on both the banks of the watershed and in between there is a check dam over here and there are piezometers which are used for monitoring so if you see the impact scheme or impact of the scheme was tapped in 6 piezometers three in shallow ground water and remaining three in the deep aquifers between 90 meter to 180 meter depth long term minute monitoring has been carried out for the study of behavior of shallow and deep aquifers based on the numerical calculation water level in the deep aquifers indicated in 1.93 meter fall during new during the year 2013 and also in 2014 but after the intake 20 stack recharge structures were developed the there was a rise of water table of the order of 2.49 meter and the piezometers they also showed the rise correspondingly so this is a remarkable improvement after conducting submersible pump development in the 20 recharge sites so just in to conclude i would say a total of around us dollar 14 million were spent in about two decades ending in 2015 up to the end of 11 five year plan some data actually was generated after 2015 also and total number of structure mar structures were 2600 that means 2600 it resulted in managed aquifer recharge of over 106 mcm and the figure for a period after year 2015 are not really available to us because central ground water board of india it releases uh, the figures 
after approval by the ministry of water resources so above study they have included data for monitoring course up to 11th five year plan only yet the onset of green revolution in india does indicate significant contribution of successful mar programs in increasing the food production in the country but still there are some glaring examples of poor maintenance in some areas some projects you know it was pointed out also by the us geological survey led study for benchmarking of central groundwater in india so with this i end my presentation thank you very much okay i hope uh, it was uh, clear uh, my presentation and hopefully you have followed it thank you very much yes sir <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very nice presentation. Quite impressive you. numbers you have there. Very nice. We'll talk. We'll talk about that on our discussion. Thank you, Singhal, for your great presentation. So uh, now we have the honor to introduce you to Dr. Adam Hutchinson with a talk: Increasing Groundwater Basin Yield with Managed Aquifer Recharge. Adam Adam Hutchinson is the Recharge Planning Manager for the Orange County Water District in Southern California. He has over 30 years. On water resource experience. In his 20 years at the, his 20 years uh, at the district, he has worked as director of recharge operations as a senior hydrogeologist among lots of our uh, nice experience he was going to present to us. Again, I would like to, to, to talk to everybody. The questions may be sent by our app. Please download if you don't have it or directly on YouTube. This session has simultaneous translations into Portuguese, Portuguese and Spanish, also on YouTube. Please make sure you direct your questions to one of our guests. Thank you, Adam. Your turn, please. Okay, can you see my screen okay? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Great. Go Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, thank you for the honor of presenting at this conference. I want to talk a little bit about increasing basin yield, not on the scale that we just heard about in India, but just within Orange County, California. So before I get to the presentation, I just wanted to uh, let's see. I'm not sure why it's not uh, advancing. Excuse me. Uh, I don't know why it's not advancing there. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay, the uh, American Society of Civil Engineers in the U.S. has updated its MARS standards. Um, I know I've used the previous one issued in 2001 quite a bit, and they have a lot of good information. Uh, we just published a new one this year, and you can see the website down there uh, on the page here and go to that website and download the new standards. Also wanted to put a plug in for save the date on the next ISMAR International Symposium on Managed Doctor Recharge. It'll be in April, 2022. Hopefully we'll be able to all meet in person by then. Uh, we have a new website. You can see it here, ismar11.net, where you can go for more information and keep up to date on what's happening there. So Orange County Water District. Uh, who are we? Why were we formed? Well, we were formed in 1933 to protect the groundwater resources of Orange County. There was a lot of problems with overdraft, overpumping, uh, seawater intrusion. So we were formed specifically to manage the groundwater supplies in Orange County. So we cover about 370 square miles. I apologize for you for using English units, but that's what I'm used to. So hopefully you can make the translation. Uh, we cover, we uh, have about two and a half million people in our area, very urbanized area, semi-arid with uh, 14 inches of rain per year. So Orange County Water District has invested uh, tens of millions of dollars in our MAR system to increase the basin yield. And I'm gonna cover some of those. Uh, we've invested in land and infrastructure, a lot of data collection and analysis. We have a couple of seawater barriers to help protect the basin from seawater intrusion. We also have a diverse uh, water supply portfolio that we've developed over the years, including 
base flow of the Santa Ana River. We're at the bottom of the watershed. Uh, storm flow capture, imported water from outside the watershed, and then of course recycled water, uh, which were a world leader in that area. Starting with Water Factory 21 back in the 1970s, the first plant of its type to take wastewater and inject it into the ground. And that's been supplanted by the groundwater replenishment system, which uh, yields 130,000 acre feet per year. Uh, that is currently undergoing the final expansion. And when that project's done in a couple of years, we'll basically be recycling all of the wastewater that we have in Orange County. So quite an achievement there. So this picture here shows you uh, what the Santa Ana River looked like back in the 1930s. You can see it's all agricultural for the most part. That's how we got our name, Orange County, from growing all the oranges. And so the water district started doing experiments in the riverbed and looking at, could we use it for increased recharge? And of course it worked very well. So as a result of this uh, effort, we started to buy land uh, over the years, including the main stem of the San Ana River, which is shown in red. And then we started buying off-stream recharge basins off to the side to pipe water to these facilities uh, for recharge. So we have about 1,500 acres of land uh, in the area of Anaheim and Orange in Orange County. So here's a photograph of one of our oldest recharge basins called Anaheim Lake. Uh, dug very deep, 50, 60 feet deep, a uh, very prolific recharge facility, provides a lot of storage as well. But our newer recharge basins, we found that it's a lot more feasible or better to construct them very shallow, four or five feet deep. That way they can be drained very quickly, turned over and put back online quickly versus having to deal with that massive volume of water that our older basin uh, contained. We've invested in a lot of infrastructure, like this picture here shows the rubber dam that we installed across the Santa Ana River. We have two of them uh, that cross the river and other smaller rubber dams and other tributaries. And even though it cost $3 million at the time it was built in 1992, it paid for itself in the first year of operation. So the infrastructure that we installed, including pump stations, pipelines, are very critical to maximizing the use of our facilities. This is an example of a large pump station that we installed in Anaheim Lake, the one I showed a picture of earlier. Uh, this allowed us to drain the basin in 10 days, dry it out, clean it, and put it back online. So uh, another investment that we made in optimizing our system here. We have a fleet of heavy equipment that we use to clean our basin. This is a picture of a large bulldozer cleaning the basin itself and getting out the clogging layer that you can see on the right-hand side that develops in all of our recharge basins. So we have a whole team of operators and equipment that we use to constantly be maintaining these facilities and keeping them uh, operating at a high capacity. We've also worked with the Army Corps of Engineers. They built a large flood control dam upstream of Orange County for flood control uh, to protect the county from flooding. And what we're able to do at the core is use a very small portion of this flood control space for stormwater capture. So the core captures that small amount of water and then releases that water to us so we can capture it and recharge. But whether for this, that stormwater would just rush out to the ocean and we would lose it. And this allows us to capture a good amount of water for storm flow. This picture here shows what the dam looked like back in 2010. We had a lot of rain in one week's time and you can see a lot of uh, water, uh, brown, dirty water behind the dam and not the dirt that clogs our recharge facility that we have to clean. But that's an example of a stormwater capture behind the dam. And so we get about 50,000 acre feet per year of local supply from this uh, source of water. The geology of the basin is such that there are different gaps that have been eroded uh, that allow for seawater intrusion. Uh, this map here shows three different gaps. There's the Alamitos Gap, Bolsa Gap, and Talbert Gap. And historically, these were pathways of seawater intrusion into the groundwater basin. But 
since the, that time, we've built a couple of different barriers, uh, the Alameda barrier in the 1960s, followed by the Talbot barrier. We're actually looking at constructing a, another barrier in Orange County because we've seen some additional seawater intrusion. So these barriers are important that they really allow us to operate the basin at a low level without a threat of seawater intrusion. Without these, uh, we would have to maintain the basin at a very full level. So what did this all mean? All these investments that we made in Mar and Orange County. So what this graphic here shows, this is the native yield of the groundwater basin. If Orange County Water District were not doing what it does, what would be the native yield of the basin? It would be about 100,000 acre feet per year from rainfall, from subsurface inflow, as well as natural recharge in the Santa Ana River. So that's the native yield. Now, what is the current yield? Well, basically, looking at all these additional resource sources that we've talked about, we have the river base flow, we have that storm flow I talked about, 50,000 acre feet per year. We have the rain subsurface flow. Notice the GWRF. GWRF, that's recycled water, that's 130,000 acre feet a year. That's a big, big chunk of our recharge every year. And then we have imported water that we buy to supplement all these other sources. So we have a diverse source of water supply. So what this means is that basically our total recharge is 330,000 acre feet a year. So this is triple the native yield. So we've been able to double the natural yield of the groundwater basin by all of our managed aquifer recharge activities. So this allowed the groundwater producers to pump more water out of the ground, uh, much more than they would have without MAR. You can see MAR is the most significant source of recharge to the basin, outstripping the natural recharge by a long shot. So this is what we've been able to do over the almost 90 years of our existence. Uh, a lot of money, a lot of time has been spent on doing this. Uh, but it can be done, and it's uh, a great benefit to the people of Orange County. So that concludes my presentation, and I'll stop sharing and go on to the next. Thank you very much, Adam. Very nice, very nice. I, I have already my, my self questions for you and Inesh. So, uh, wait for the, the audience first, but I'm very curious, very nice projects. Thank you very much. Uh, now I have the honor to introduce you, to introduce Dr. Enrique Fernandez, coordinator of the Commission on Managed Aquifer Recharge of the IAH, with a talk, How Mar, Mar Managed Aquifer, Re Managed Aquifer Recharge Face Up Climate Changes Adverse Impacts. Enrique, has 31 years of experience. He's an associate lecturer at Madrid Moncloa campus and coordinator of the Commission on Managed Aquifer Recharge for the, uh, the IIH. And he has participated in almost 30 books, mostly as authors and editor, etc. mostly dedicated on Mar. So it's a great achievement. Again, just a moment. Question may be sent by our app, please download. Or, direct on, uh, or directly on YouTube. This session has simultaneous translations into Portuguese and Spanish, also on YouTube. Please make sure you direct your questions to one of our guests. Thank you, Enrique. Your turn, please. Run the show now. Can you see my screen, please? Thank you Perfect. so much, Dr. Oliveira, for so, so kind introduction. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we are going to talk about how Mar faces up climate change adverse impacts and indicators evolution and trends for the Mar CC binomia. Uh, talking about the introduction, manage aquifer recharge. From now on, I say simply Mar is one of the water management measures to combat the adverse climate change impact. And the main objective of this presentation is to justify this first assessment. Uh, contextualizing this presentation, let me introduce you the four, according to the Palmer Severity 
in this for the Mediterranean area for the 2100 horizon. There will be a 50% of water availability regarding the, the amount right now, what, what means a minus four for a stream drought. In this contest, MAR provides guarantee with respect to mainly two factors, the future water supply availability, and secondly, it is an important asset for climate change adaptation measures. The methodology we have uh, carried out have been the seeking and tracking of indicators, either adopted or designed, and the study of the evolution of all of them. Regarding the four principal demonstrations of manifestations of the climate change effects, what is the increase of the average temperature, the decrease of the annual precipitation, the increase of the stream water related events, and the increase also of the sea level rise. There are some problems and real impacts due to climate change, very well defined. So, like for example, the increase of the evaporation of the evapotranspiration, the increase also of the water demand, the decrease of the current availability in some cases due to pollution or say line water intrusion, the decrease of the runoff, etc. And there are a set of examples how much solutions either from the prevention or mitigation point of view are facing up all these different um, impacts we have already mentioned. Let me please expose you some of the examples of the indicators and the places where they have been taken. These are examples. The technological solution will be how to create the irregular distribution of the precipitation. The indicator will be the groundwater volume storage, increase or decrease in the storage areas. What is to say, the intentional increase in the reserves of groundwater. For the higher flooding level, one indicator could be the reduction in energy cost for pumping this groundwater. And also, it is joined to the percentage cost of the reduction of the CO2 emissions. Another one would be the forest management to handle the stream water phenomena. And the indicator could be the percentage of total runoff water changes. These are three examples. There are too many. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to expose most of them. But let me present you some examples of these supporting these indicators and these trends. For example, in Abu Dhabi, the strategic reservoir is about 26 million of cubic meters per year by means of 300 injection wells. Here near Madrid, in my area, in the Sardinalis Aquifer, it was over exploited. The groundwater decrease from 1972 to the year 2002 was 30 meters. And since 2002, it is increasing at the pace of 30 centimeters per year, thanks to bad activities. Also, the subsoil temperature reduction and the humidity is rising, thanks to mud in this area. The indicator is the soil moisture thanks to money is increasing between 10 and 20 percent in the soil, I mean, and in the aquifer, in the unsaturated zone, between 10 and 40 percent. I am talking of gross figures. Regarding precipitation, the second huge impact, more and reduce can be considered circular economy. And there are some examples, for example, in Graz, in Austria, where the reserve is for the Urban water supply is increased thanks to more in about 3.5 NCMs. In Madrid, the same system for also for urban water supply is about 5 NCMs per year. Also, talking about water storage and filtration of purification in river banks, we have brought two examples one right from Pisa, Italy, where, where the river bank filtration used as a nature bank based solution to purify the water of the river is providing to the city of Pisa about 8 million cubic meters per year. In the case of Ica, Peru, the infiltration as an average is about 12 NCMs per year, in this case for agricultural purposes. 
no son Yerba y otras sutras. There is also marked in Yerba areas with two main targets. The first, the re uh, reducing the rhino, and the second is breaking the heat island effect. I'm not going to stop because the indicators are specific for each case. But at the end of the presentation, there are also some examples. Talking about the on the road to water management and climate resilience, it is a set of innovative solutions to increase water security and resilience, while at the same time we are protecting roads for flooding. There is an example again in the Sanitary Service in Spain when the roads run off, is going to mark an out and enhancing the filtration in the aquifer. Increasing the flow rate across the canals over 12% per year. Regarding the stream water related phenomena, we can talk about the ecosystem restoration as a tool also to face up the climate change adverse impacts. Here is an example for Phoenix, where the natural recharge is increased about 15% per year thanks to MAP. The directive infiltration of the combat to other floods as a security measure. In this case, there is a big door hole for one used to an irrigation dam. When one over flood concurs, a certain amount of this volume is introduced in a car system. So we are reducing the peak of the over flood in about 0.05 MCM in each uh, over flood. It's very really important. This, this is a card that is able to infiltrate as much as you can provide to these more homes. Also, it's very important to mention the lamination and retention dikes in fluvial courses as a recharge structure. These lamination dikes are producing a double effect. First, to slow down the concentration time, especially in over blocks, again, and also they are enhancing the aquifer recharge. Possibly and um, partially by effort. So the indicator will be infiltration possibly by means of these dikes. Also, the check down infiltration well combination of the mark system is really important of the solar signal as exposed in many examples in India. And this, the indicator is the volume of retained runoff running in the Wadi, in this case in Tunisia. The store in the aquifer. Yeah. Let's go to the fourth of the huge elements, what is the cellular rise. The indicator will be the volume of injected water through the mass system to push back the saline water intrusion, either in this example in Malta South or in this one in Barcelona on the east coast of Spain. Or these models are displaying the difference of the chloride distribution in the aquifer without the hydraulic barrier of wind. So, we would like to mention also that MAR is not only one adaptation technique, it is also for mitigation regarding climate change. And here is one example how much a rise in water level of 2.3 meters as an average represents in energy terms for the Tamarillo example in Spain also. So the savings in kilowatts per hour is from 12 to 36 percent, depending on the location of each panel. It is equivalent to 3,000 per year for the farmer. But also the most important, and this is why we defend, it is mitigation, because the reduction in the consumption of CO2 by the pumps is about 10, over 10,000 kilograms per year. It is important regarding mitigation. Here are the results. I am not going to stop one by one explaining the indicators. Some of the samples have been already provided, but on this scheme, this tablet, the table, wants to represent that all the impacts mentioned at the beginning have at least, at least one representation all around the world that is combating somehow this harmful effect. And here are all the samples. I will need some time longer. I want to be omitting. It's not only data, but I need to So, the conclusion, my first question is 
you want to tell me from the chart? Can you tell me from the chart? Can you tell me from the chart? Can you tell me from the chart? You want to write in this information? There is one article in the smart um, water journal special issue. This information is enlarged very much. I would like also to remind you that the managing, managing Aquifer Recharge Commission exists. You are invited. There is a technical forum for free. Everybody can book it here, but it is better if you belong to this association because it is interesting, in my opinion, of course. And finally, I'd like to mention three imminent events. The Euro UNESCO and IAH event, over 1,300 people already booked at the end of this month. The WhatsApp group coordinated by Felipe Everton, and the release, very imminent, there is not an exact date, of the UNESCO book of 28 international May, March, sorry, case studies entitled Exemplary Case Studies of Sustainable and Economic Myanmar. So this is all. Thank you very much, very sincerely, for your kind attention. Thank you, Mr. Everton. Hello. Thank you. Very nice presentation, Enrique. Uh, I liked that very much. Uh, please, uh, if you could send us uh, the link again, we're gonna, going to help distribute the, the book that you mentioned, OK? All right. So uh, we follow our presentation here today uh, after Enrique. Now, but not least, Dr. Doutora, I may speak in Portuguese, she understands Portuguese. Bruna Soldera, the president of the IAH Early Career Hydrogeologist Network Brazil. She will talk about recharge and quality, compensation for water use. Bruna has a PhD in Geosciences and Environment. She is the Executive Secretary of the Instituto Água Sustentável, along with the Presidency of the Early Career Hydrogeologist in Brazil. She has been developing an important career on communication of groundwater to the great public. Again, the questions may be sent uh, by our app, please download, or directly on YouTube. This session has simultaneous translations into Portuguese and Spanish, also on YouTube. Please make sure you direct your question to one of our guests. Thank you, Bruna. Your turn, please. Thank you, Everton. Just a minute. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah? Yep, perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. I hope to contribute a little uh, to this online meeting. The Sorry. Uh, OK. Uh, the previous lectures were excellent and they brought us rich information uh, congratulations to the speakers. So today I am going to talk about it, recharge and quality compensation for water use. I will give you a more detailed explanation about the uh, concept and methodology called the compensable water, orange calculation example. Then I will move on the talk that is the title of this lecture. So I talk about uh, managing aquifer recharge. I follow if uh, why is it important? And I conclude with the uh, next step, okay? Let's go. Compensable water. Compensable water is a, is a volume of water necessary to dilute a soil or water quality parameter down to the environmental, environmental standards. 
compensable wire is a concept can be assigned values uh, got by a proposed equation and following a methodology also proposed. It's a simple, innovative, and comprehensive principle uh, that can be widely used by everyone, governments, business, and the citizens. Compensable water is a concept to assess water based on its quality and the quantity. Size water conservation needs efficient policy measures and uh, uh, water management is essential, is important to sustain economic development, uh, even to ensure protection and uh, sustainable use of water. And the most importantly, ensure water for the present and the future generation. Then promote adequate technical capacity and support in water and sewage management is a challenge faced by many, many countries. Sustainable water is based on the existing concept of a gray water footprint uh, developed by Chapagan and Hookstra. The compensable water concept is a result of my PhD thesis and it was developed together with my supervisor, Everton de Oliveira. Um, the equation for calculating the compensable water is compensable water is equal mass of solute entire or present in by Maximum concentration, this solute permissible in water. This can be set for a month, uh, years, 10 years. It depends on, on your goal. Compensable water is based on gray water footprint. Gray water footprint is a polluted water or rapid time is the volume of fresh water required to assimilate a load of contaminants, a load of pollution. Compensable water is the maximum volume of water could be potentially impacted by human activity, by anthropic activity. Uh, gray water footprint is a, a class of uh, water footprint. And what is water footprint? It's an indicator of, of the direct and indirect fresh water used by consumer, producers, business, culture, and more. But uh, here you may be wondering, why the difference between compensable water and water footprint, or more specific here, gray water footprint? Water footprint cons consider global water use. Compensable water focus on environment impacts. It uh, is like a metric to assess environment impacts, water impacts. Water footprint consider all the location of a study. Compensable water consider the impact that can be caused in other regions. And to, to compensate impact caused in other regions. Water footprint doesn't consider compensation, social and economic impact. Compensable water include, include all this, and they are the main issue, issues in the, its approach. Some example, uh, rainfall that will embed all kinds of uh, soils and uh, 
on this way to the river or aquifer, beverage industries which consume a large vol volume of water and consequently generate a large volume of effluent, liquid effluent. And the products there were, in a sense, denaturated water, water bottling companies. Soiled from road salt that end up in aquifer or river. Residuals contaminants in aquifer, residuals contaminants left behind to incomplete remediation of the contaminate soil or groundwater. So here there are some examples, but, but all human activities have the potential to generate compensable water. So let's go. The managed aquifer recharge mark technique can be a full tool for effluent use by providing complementary effluent treatment, increase the availability of water in aquifer and provide the front safety factor to soil subsidence and salt water intrusion. I don't describe much about MAR because the other speakers already do it. But was this the relation between compensable water and MAR? Both co converge to the same purpose, that is a managed tool in the sustainable use of water. When uh, compensable water use the compensation principle, it you, would be possible to finance water projects in different locations, like the support mar in an area where groundwater is huge, impacted by over-exploration, or there is a scarce of water. This is really, really important to, to ensure quality water in sufficient quantity for all. The world need water. And here I talk to more, I can say more. The world needs groundwater and therefore we must propose a way to conserve, conserve this resource and use it with awareness. For example, uh, water from, from aquifer is used for production goods and services. Their wa water abstracted from, from the aquifer is not, is not being recharged back to same aquifer. Aquifer are being legally depleted in several parts of the world and the water quality is being degraded or just released released to surface water. There is an imbalance. There is exploitation of groundwater, but there is no recharge to compensate. Again, MAR is very important in this situation. Mm. Why is it important? Why is compensable water is important? Why? For many reasons, it can help to quantify how much an industry or person who use water for daily activity is willing to pay for the impact caused to water. The result of this will be a water stress, both quality and quantity. The result can lead to economic woes. This is, a, this is based of an economic tool that has a potential to transform water management. And today, the focus on MAR. The MAR can help in compensation the large use of groundwater and keep water available to everyone to present, and future generation, it is very important. Finally, next steps. 
I mean, adopt and encourage action to conserve, conserve, conservation, invest in development of research about compensable water, quality indicators and certificates to industry that, that decrease the compensation water, compensable water, efficiency, economy aspect of the water. Thank you, a question or a welcome here is my email. Thank you everyone, thank you Everton, thank you other speakers. Well, thank you Bruna for your nice presentation. And uh, going to, to go now for the, the questions from the audience. And, and please everybody uh, stay, stay tuned there, your uh, speakers, because we have some questions. Some questions here. Let me let me go in the order that we were presented. Just a moment here. Okay. First is Carlos Augusto de Medeiros. He he wants to he he thanks Singal for his uh, uh, nice presentation, and he he wants you to to tell him if there are uh, uh, bibliography references from the, the, these programs in India that he could use. So if you could send to, to us an email, we can uh, send him the, the, the question. But you can talk now, please, Dr. Singal. Uh, yeah, you, are talk, uh, you want this, uh, some references on this yes. uh, my talk? Yeah. Okay, I'll send it to you by email or something. Will it be okay? Or uh, Perfect. because Perfect. there are, uh, yeah, we'll I'll be able to send it to you. Thank you by very email. much. And then, and then okay. we will we, we'll, we'll leave them available to anyone who's interested. Will be on our website. Okay, you can you can check. And also we will leave that down on the YouTube uh, recording session. We can leave the references there. Should you guys, okay. Adam, Bruna, and Hiki. Uh, want to, to leave some references as well from your presentation, we'll be glad to, to distribute them to, to an interested audience. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. There is uh, uh, another question here, and since it was mentioned on uh, Adam's panel, I think he will be directed first, but any one of you could answer. It's not, a, it's not really a question, it's more like a protest, but it deserves uh, an educated answer because it's, it's in, it is interesting. Uh, is the seminar about dams? The recharge of aquifers is made through reforestation. Can you discuss about that, Adam, please? Or any one of you after Adam is welcome to discuss that. Yeah, I think others might have a better answer. You know, Orange County is very urbanized. Uh, we don't really have too many forests. Uh, we're arid watershed. So um, maybe Enrique and others might be in a better position to answer that one. Yeah. Enrique, my answer, because you, you mentioned something about the forest on, on your talk, or probably uh, Ranesh may, may, may say something yeah. as well. Yeah, thanks, Everton. Just to provide the figure in a former project called Dinamar, we were comparing in the, on the east coast of, of Spain also in the same climate, in the same geological conditions, and in the same place. And the infiltration in close areas, one forested and the other one completely barren. And the infiltration was about 18% higher in the forested one than in the barren one. What is very important regarding more and general infiltration, water calls water. Okay, okay. Uh, Vanesh, can you say something about comparison between uh, forest infiltration and engineered uh, managed aquifer recharge, please? Yeah. Uh No, no, it's off. Please turn it on. It's off now. Is it okay? Yeah. Can I? Yeah. 
Yes, okay, now so we can hear you. Actually, uh, what has happened is when there is a recharge taking place, so this uh, soil in the unsaturated zone that will also get saturated to some extent. But during the transition period, when water goes down up to the aquifer, so in that portion, the in the unsaturated zone, the soil moisture will increase. So that actually helps in reforestation of the area. So that is the idea behind it. Wherever there is a recharge, this thing in the unsaturated zone, when water is passing through that, in the wetter zone, as we call it. so it will in lead to increase in the soil moisture and it will help in developing the better forestation and all that that is my uh, reply okay but uh, uh, what do you say uh, would just if we if we had only forest and if we don't help with uh, recharge would the forest do a better job than the than the than a dam for example or creating a lake like adams presented no i uh, i could not follow why, what you are saying if it is a forest he says comparing just a forest if we have only forests and not uh, an engineered project to to recharge would the okay. forest do a better job on themselves compared to an engineered project yeah in general yes forests are helpful but the uh, instant recharge they won't give, be able to give because there is evapotranspiration through the uh, trees in the forest so that actually depletes the moisture over the period of time so therefore uh, it becomes uh, in comparison to the other structures or mar structures they are not so helpful instantly it it is gradual process actually okay so that is my reply yeah, i agree you. I could add if you you are the experts, but well, as you pro, you project and you increase the 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 recharge by creating a, a dam on a lake, you you increase the soil saturation and then the 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 relative permeability. So the the flow is much higher on a an engineered process than it is on a on a on a forest for a forest. So it, it is more yeah, uh, effective. Yeah. right actually More it depends effective. on case to case actually yeah. it depends from case to case you know so it's difficult to generalize the answer that is my point yeah. okay thank you thank you any more points can you go to another question uh i have a question for um for adam here adam uh you said that the 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 project that you presented it paid off in one year How was that calculated? Against which data you 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 had that done? Please. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in Orange County, we're fortunate that we have a benchmark that we can use to value water, and that is imported water. So, if we don't have enough groundwater supply, the alternative is very expensive imported water, which costs in America about a thousand dollars per acre foot of water. And so, if we are able to increase groundwater by mar, then cheaper than a thousand dollars an acre foot, then it's the cost beneficial for us. Okay. So we charge about five hundred dollars an acre foot for our groundwater. So the cost of groundwater is half of the cost of the alternative imported water supply. So that's the benefit to our groundwater producers of all of our activities. So. Great question. It's very important to know what the alternative is. If you don't have groundwater, what are you going to have to pay for the alternative source? And that helps you build projects, justify our new MAR activities. Well, okay. Thank, thank you. Now, this question is uh, for uh, Dinesh, please. It comes from yes. Ricardo Ricardo Irata here in Brazil. Uh, Recharge in fracture, fractured aquifers. is a great challenge where soil is thin and no matter rock is shallow based on the experience what are the best techniques for efficient aquifer recharge you can you repeat your action. question can yes. can you repeat of course yes yes he says recharge in fractured aquifers is a great yes. challenge where soil is thin and no matter rock is shallow 
based on experience, what are the best techniques for an efficient aquifer recharge in those conditions? Actually, uh, fractured aquifers, they offer a big challenge, actually. It is the recharging is a uh, real uh, difficult task. But uh, uh, as far as my this thing is go, uh, knowledge goes, you know, they, you have to, if you can make the injection wells there, probably that could be more useful because, uh, uh, you know, the fractured aquifers, they are permeability will be relatively low. It won't be very high. So you need to have some kind of recharge shaft or something so that water can reach the aquifer in deeper zones easily. That is my feeling. It is, okay. uh, of course, again, it is case to case study. You know, it okay. is, uh, you can't generalize the answer actually. That is the problem. All right. A a any more, do you, want, do you want to add something in you, any of you please? Enrique, por, por favor. Uh, thank you, Everton. Yes, just one comment. When you choose what uh, system implement for mar in hard rocks, you have to choose either a point, a well, either a line, a channel, or either a polygon, an infiltration pond. In hard rocks, you have to to attack the biggest uh, possible amount of faults and fractures to be refilled with water. So I vote for the linear designs either horizontal or vertical. What is to say, either a canal or a channel or a borehole in order to intercept the largest amount of fractures possible. It is, that is my idea. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you again, Enrique, now. Uh, from Gilmar Mangueira. What? Well, it's in Portuguese. I'll, I'll, I'll have to exercise my, my <laughs> translation here. Well, what are the impacts uh, that uh, deforestation and, and the burnings in, in Brazil, uh, specifically, they mentioned the, the aquifer in the Amazon, uh, for the, the, the climatic changes, the weather change in the world? If you have a question, an answer for that. <laughs> it's not exactly my speciality, but we are all aware that it is a huge damage to the whole planet, not only to Amazonia, in this case, regarding even uh, what groundwater quality, because there have been always uh, fi fires in the forests, but not that amount. So I think the water quality is um, getting worse and worse. Okay, yeah, the question is not specifically on, on, on Richard. Thank you. So I have a question for Bruna now, from Julia, Julia Costa. Bruna, do you have any example of applying the compensable water concept? Thank you. Great question. Yes. I conducted my uh, PhD in the Piracicaba, Capivarim, and the Jundiaí watershed here in Brazil. And uh, I studied three industries, beverage industries, beer and soft, so, uh, soft drinks, dairy and slaughter house. And in these three segments, I could see that the volume of ground wa compensable water is large and unsustainable for the environment. The effluents were treated, but there is still a large volume of it. Compensable water. Okay. Okay. Anyone want to add something on that? Okay, there is a question here. I don't know if I got it correctly. And it's Spanish. Can you help me, Enrique? Por favor. It's, ¿Cómo afecta el fracking, las recargas de los acuíferos? I'm not sure. <laughs> I am not aware of any place in the world where the, um, it's being practiced at the same time fracking and mar. Yeah. But anyway, I don't fracking know. is increasing the number of fractures and the receiving medium will have a higher capacity for storage. 
but of course some detailed studies should have to be performed. Okay, okay, thank you. Let me see here another. Uh, Felipe Peixoto, that goes to, to both Dinesh and Adam, I think. Yes. Uh, let me get this. Who's responsible for funding the projects of Manage Aquifer Recharge in India and US? Anyone who, who, who wants to take it first? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, okay, Adam. Yes, yeah, so. Just a moment, Dinesh. Yes, yeah, so in Orange County, we're a unique uh, agency in that we're responsible for the groundwater resources in Orange County. So we have the sole authority to implement projects to charge for the water. We, like I mentioned earlier, we charge all the groundwater producers $500 an acre foot. All the wells are metered, carefully uh, tracked. We bill for that water and we use that money to manage the aquifer, to recharge it, to monitor the water quality and do other, re generate recycled water. So that's our funding mechanism. It, it works very well. Uh, the beneficiaries are the ones paying for the water. Um, so there's a very tight link between our fees and the benefit received for the fees. Um, so that's how we do it in Orange County. Uh, other areas in the state of California are grappling with this. Uh, they passed a new law in California in 2014 requiring sustainable groundwater management. We were the last state in the country to require management of groundwater to be sustainable. So these agencies are going to be coming to grips with how to charge for projects. And you can bet there's going to be a lot of fighting over that and a lot of litigation. So uh, a lot of fireworks coming out of California over the next couple of decades. So, yeah, stay tuned. good. Well, I'd like you to, to, to link a bit with uh, Bruna's idea. Let's say if someone uh, recharge water in his area, is he allowed to, to have a, you know, a discount on the amount he pays? How does it work? Can he be compensated in the idea that Bruna presented? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of uh, discussion going on at the state level between all these new agencies formed to manage groundwater sustainably, looking at credit systems, what can people do if they recharge water, especially on farmland. Uh, there's a term called flood mar that's caught a lot of fire here in terms of during flood season, people use their agricultural fields to flood them and recharge water. So there's a lot of con conversation going on about compensation for those uh, farmland being used for recharge. How much credit do you get? How much do you cut to the environment? Uh, those kind of issues. So compensation for water is definitely a hot topic. And um, I think everybody's going to have a different formula depending on the area and the politics. OK, thank you. Uh, Professor Danesh, please, can you help us about the funding on the project in India? You have to unmute yourself. It's mute. You have to unmute, please. No, now I am audio. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So actually the main agencies uh, in India which are uh, responsible for uh, artificial recharge programs, that is the state uh, agency, that is the Central Groundwater Board that is uh, being done or the state departments of uh, st uh, the state groundwater boards of the country. And there is a program which is uh, goes by the name of Mahatma Gandhi, who was considered to be the father of India. Mahatma Gandhi, uh, uh, you know, unemployment program is there in which they have got large sums, you know. So under that various recharge programs have been carried out since after 2012, particularly because after 2012, the Central Groundwater Authority has been formed in India. So that is regulating 
the implementation of uh, this artificial recharge schemes or managed aquifer recharge scheme. But as far as the residential areas are concerned, for example, in Delhi, in Delhi there are some group housing societies which are supposed to be managing themselves about the rainwater harvesting. Uh, you know, so each uh, society or government building it is mandatory to have uh, artificial charge schemes or the rainwater harvesting programs. Mostly it is through the state or if it is by private sector, then in group housing societies, it is done. I hope I made myself clear. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I have a question for, for Bruna here from Niels Hartog. Thank you, Bruna, for an interesting talk. I'm struggling with the term compensable water. Is it a measure of damage? Because it may not be, it may not everywhere be possible to compensate the loss of water. Great, great question. Uh, when I use the compensation principle concept, I can, um, it permits apply um, different funds in other watershed, the other location. So I can uh, move the fund from this area to other area and uh, apply this fund in another project. For example, the, the pollution area and apply for treatment project in this area, not the necessary the same area I am um, developing my study. Okay, I. I ask you this question. I hope. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, there is another point. I think is that uh, uh, could be to Dinesh and Enrique. Yes. And the question is: What about the purification of the water in fractured fractured rocks with shallow layer of soil? What do you have to do? to infiltrate water directly into the fractures? No, it, or the, risk see, of, the risk of contamination, I guess, that's the question. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, now, now you're off, you're, you're on. Okay, yeah. better now? Yeah, yeah. actually this, uh, um, can, I am forgetting. Yeah, you just repeat your question, please. Sure, perfect. Uh, yes. What about the, the, the treatment of the water uh, when you have to uh, infiltrate it into the fractured zones because it goes directly into the yeah, aquifer, yeah, yeah. the risk yeah. of contamination? Yeah, actually risk of contamination is uh, uh, avoided by, uh, you know, particularly if it is an industrial water, then it has to be uh, purified at the before uh, using for recharge. You cannot directly inject industrial water, but uh, if it is a, uh, if it is meeting the quality standards, like in India, there is a standard, uh, it is Bureau of Indian Standard is there, where the drinking water requirement is there, it is called in Indian Standard 10,500. That is the code. So for using that, if the water quality is under the specification, then that water has to be recharged for that. Otherwise, once it this industrial water having impurities, if it reaches the aquifer, then it is not possible to purify it. That is the problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Enrique. Okay. okay. I'm going to repeat and the Professor Singali's uh, response. So we cannot mar water in hard rocks if they don't have the desired quality. We need very good water quality for hard rocks. Otherwise, we are going to contaminate the aquifer in the very short term, and mar should be avoided in this case. I have I have a, uh, one addition yes, yes. to that for you both, please. I, I once heard 
when when I had a discussion about the same the same question, and people say, well. If I treat the water, why would I uh, recharge it? Uh, uh, could you help us answering this question? If I have to treat the water, why should I recharge it and not use it? No, this is, uh, can I, uh, can I give yes, the please. answer, respond? Yeah. Yes, please. Actually, you are right. Uh, you know, the, in all industrial water, it cannot be directly used for recharge. Okay, in the artificial, in the MAR program. And uh, it has to be purified at least the first or second stage of purification has to be done before recharging the water into fractured aquifer. And I have come across some recharge programs in the peninsular India, South India, where fractured rocks are common. And they are using the, uh, you know, compressors for injecting the water there. And uh, so that water can penetrate the fractured zones, you know, but the quality has to be ensured because you can't pollute the water, which is normally water in fracture zones is in a way, in a natural form, it is not very bad or uh, in quality. But uh, if you are using impure water for recharge, that is not advisable, it's not permitted. And there is the National Groundwater Authority in India, which is regulating the use of uh, water to be recharged. Good, good, thank you. Uh, yeah. Enrique. Yes, thank you again. So when you when you deploy any more project, you can recover that water in the short term or in the long term. It is up to you. So you can recharge in winter with the extra precipitations and to irrigate in the summertime with this water, or you can reserve it in a place where it is preserved for, uh, from evaporation and from contamination, but it, as it is an aquifer. And it is an strategic reservoir. You can take out the, this water in the long term. So it is an, a strategic measure looking at the future. But if we want to face up climate change, we need many strategic reserves. Yeah, I agree, I agree. So the point being is that that we have uh, the the aquifers work as, as the reservoirs. So not always yeah. you have the all this space on surface to store clean water, and then that's why the recharge comes into place. That's the I think one of the reasons we use uh, manage aquifer recharge so we can store on a place, then you can uh, uh, take it whenever you need, right? Okay, so there's one, one uh, question for you, Enrique. Uh, if you could uh, send us the reference about the, the, the change in recharge in forests, like, like you mentioned, if you could send, give us the, the, the reference about that, that you mentioned that, that you, you, you had a, a, an increase in recharge on a forested area compared to a barren one. Okay. Of course, I can provide you the references or the the colleague asking this question to contact me directly as he prefers. Oh, perfect, or, perfect. Prefer. We'll, 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 we'll send your, your contact to, to them then. Okay, thank you very much. We have time for, for well, we, we still have, which is good, we have many questions, right? Uh, let me get one here. Ooh. Do you have any of you experience with, uh, with MAR in, in aquifer and karst, where you have a uh, high occurrence of do dolinas, or how to say that, you know, the, that formation. Do you have that? Sure you have. <laughs> Who wants to, to answer that? You, Enrique, or Professor? No, there, is, there is only one experience of Mar with one doline also in Alicante on this coast, and it, it is going well because it, it you can introduce as much water as you desire. It is a cast. Good. Then no, I something. Um, I, oh, I Adam, heard, sorry. Yes, I actually heard a webinar on uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, they do quite a bit of recharge using wells into limestone formation. I've 
like Enrique said, uh, karst terrain can provide high volume uh, of flow, except high volume of flow. You don't get the normal soil aquifer treatment that you do in a sand and gravel aquifer like we have in Orange County. So uh, the issue there would be making sure that the water is very clean, uh, that you're recharging and not uh, polluted. And so um, that's the trade-off there with uh, a car system. We're gonna have to make sure the water quality is uh, very good. Okay, uh, Dinesh, please. Yeah, what is experience the experience on, on 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 Mars? On, on actually, cars. because I have been teaching, you see, so most of my experience is related to the field studies which we have been uh, doing as part of my teaching program. So I did not really work in any uh, uh, field organization in my whole career, but <laughs> yes, I have seen some programs. I have seen, for example, in Northwestern India, there is a uh, some Mars project I have seen, but that is the alluvial area mostly. And they have constructed the uh, recharge wells there or recharge shafts, which are used for recharging the water. So, and they are using either, there are some lakes in that part of the country. So those lake water is used for artificial recharge there. In, that is the northwestern part of Haryana where, in fact, which also suffered due to waterlogging problem. So there, this waterlogging being water comes, groundwater table comes close to the surface. So some of the uh, uh, areas are suffering from the, uh, uh, this waterlogging. So there was, there used to be one famous hydrogeologist known as Cruzman from Netherlands, if you have heard his name, he has written a sure. uh, book Kuzma, on yes, uh, yes, recharge, yes, yes. <laughs> so he was visiting Haryana, and he gave some reports about the groundwater situation there. But uh, as far as direct involvement of uh, in the recharge programs is concerned, uh, I'm afraid I don't have really much exposure in field. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. One question to, uh, I guess, uh, could be for Adam. Uh, could you comment on the importance of recharge uh, on uh, urbanized areas uh, with some uh, focusing on the decreasing of the uh, flooding problems and, you know, in, uh, in these areas? I think you mentioned something. Can you repeat the question again? Uh well, he wants to, 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 to mention the, the importance of recharge in uh, urban areas uh, related, if you could relate to, to the flooding problems, if you can use the, the, the flooding, decrease the flooding or use that for recharge. That's the question. Right. You know, I don't know that MAR is a good tool for flood control management. Uh, the volume that you're able to divert and recharge are relatively small compared to the flood flows that you might see in a significant storm event. Um, so um, I don't think MAR and flood control are, you really can't link them together, not in an urban environment uh, where the water runs off very quickly. Um, I did talk about our flood control dam. We have upstream of us, a Prado dam uh, built in 1941 to protect Orange County from flooding, which had happened previously and oh. devastating effect. Uh, so that's a good multi-use facility. So if you can work together with flood control, MAR and flood control can coexist and work very well together as multi-use facilities. And that's happening all over the state of California where we're relooking at our reservoirs and trying to be smarter in how we operate them for MAR and flood control together Whereas historically, those have kind of been separated. So we're trying to integrate those together and we look at how we operate a lot of our reservoirs throughout the state of California. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I have, can I, can, excuse uh, me, can yes, I can just add ahead. something? Yes. Yes. Of course you, you know, can. Uh, this is a, a good, very good project about this flood water of River Yamna in Delhi. There is a, a big, 
big flood plain of river yamuna if you have heard a adjoining delhi city in india which is the capital of india and government of delhi has taken up a large project for stopping the floods and that flood water is being used for recharging the uh, ground water in the yamuna flood plain and that ground water which is recharged it will be used for drinking purposes for the population of delhi and that is on a very large scale this project has been taken up in fact the farmers of that area are being given compensation financial compensation by the government of delhi to stop doing the farming of the high intensive crops you know only those flower crops etc will be allowed that's all otherwise the highly water used crops they are being discouraged from using and for that they are giving money they are being giving money a compensation kind of thing in terms of money so that they don't use the highly water intensive crop there so this is a large program which has been started by government of delhi state in india and it is it seems to be fairly successful program thank wow. you thank you very much very nice example guys nice. uh we're running out of time here i'm gonna gonna pass you uh just another question the last one and you can uh, and you can uh answer all of you if you can and you can make your final statement after that please so the question is is directly to the to to bruna but you also may add something if you like as usual bruna are there companies already uh treating their effluents to a drinking a drinking standard to uh to recharge aquifers do you know that could be in brazil or anywhere else please bruna first okay Uh, well, it's very difficult to answer because in Brazil it's very difficult to anything in research. And I don't know, but uh, I, I, I had many difficulties when I conduct my research because the companies uh, don't want to collaborate in, and uh, this create a stress and the difficult to research, but it's a good idea for initiating a study together one, one company who is disposed to help in compensation water and, and compensable water. Okay, you guys, for the same question, do you know of people drinking water to, to recharge. Adam? Uh, yeah, I'm actually holding a bottle right here. Uh, you can't really see it, but it's a bottle of our recycling. Your, your bottle gets <laughs> transparent when you go to the... <laughs> yeah, I can drink this water if I want, but I won't right now. But um, yeah, we recycle 130 million gallons per day of sewer water. We purify it to drinking water quality and we put it back into the aquifer uh, to be blended with groundwater and that water is used. So that's a reliable source of water that we use and depend on. It represents close to 40% of all the recharge we do on an annual basis. So uh, huge uh, benefit to Orange County. So all the recyclable water that we have, wastewater is being purified and recharged and recycled. So um, that's very important. And other people are looking at that throughout the state of California, similar projects. Oh, that's very nice to hear. Thank you. Uh, Dinesh, you have something to add? Sorry? Uh, something to add about the uh, treating water to drinking limits. Well, and then... yeah, but in, you see, I have heard that in Singapore, yeah, they are uh, doing that uh, using the uh, purified effluents for recharging the aquifers. But uh, to me, in India, it, this seems to be an impractical uh, idea and that nobody, because we are, most of the, us are religious type minded people, you know, so we won't think of uh, using the effluent recharge water for drinking. 
that kind of thing because any amount of cleaning any amount of filtration and all that it won't give us the mental satisfaction about <laughs> we want <laughs> we want agree to you know uh, ethically we will be you know not satisfied that is my uh, good, good. <laughs> that's that's, like that's an interesting yes. point yes yes enrique yes. please Yes, indeed, we ha I have exposed some examples before where mar was driven directly to the taps in the cities. In Pisa, for example, in Madrid, in different places, either passing through the a bank of the river or not. So there are plenty of examples and it is easy to, to look at most of them. And taking advantage of the use of the micro, and as a final statement from my side, just to remind everyone that the uh, resources management of water is integrated. So if the IWRM is the body, MAR is an arm, arm, arm of the body. And, uh, it, it alone cannot solve all the problems regarding water management that we have. Good, good. Thank you. So, uh... Our time is, is, is out already. So please, can you put a, a final statement? Let's follow the, the order that we started. Please, uh, Dinesh, can you say your final statement to, to the audience, please? Yes, uh, my uh, take on this is that, uh, you know, you might have heard that many cities in India, like Delhi and Bangalore in the south, southern part, and even in the Chennai or Madras in the South India, you know, they people have given prediction that in uh, in maybe one or two decades, these cities will run out of water. That is the fear or apprehension. And uh, it is, I think the recharge or MAR uh, managed aquifer recharge programs, they will become a big savior for uh, for the uh, making the water available for various uses like drinking as well as irrigation. So this is my final take on this. Thank you. Thank you very much for very kind, <laughs> very generous of your part. Uh, <laughs> Adam, please. Yes, uh, my final statement is basically that, you know, Manitoba for Recharge is one of those few areas where we can really partner with Mother Nature and help the natural recharge process and really intervene and try and correct a lot of the wrongs that have uh, happened in the past and really uh, do a better job, uh, you know, managing our precious water resources. So um, it's a great, exciting field to be in. And I think it's only going to grow in importance with climate change and all the challenges we have in front of us. So um, I'm glad we had this session. Look forward to many more. Well. Thank you very much, Saint. Thank you very much. Uh, Enrique. Enrique, are you there? I don't think his connection is poor. Bruna, could you could you jump ahead, please? Yes, your final yes. statement. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, compensable water is uh, really helpful to assist in water management and sustainable use of water, especially agriculture and industrial sectors. And it, it concept have, has a strong connection with groundwater, large use of groundwater. Okay. All right, thank you, Bruna. So I guess, unfortunately, Enrique is down. <laughs> this connection is gone. So with, with this last statement, we close our October 2nd panel of the online edition of the Groundwater World Congress. Please follow us, Abbas, on our social media pages, download the app of the event, and participate on our thematic WhatsApp groups, we are, which are a great place to meet friends, expand your network, and warm up for our presidential event in 2021. August 2021. Stay tuned that we will release the November attractions soon. Thank you very much and stay with us. Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you all.
ठीक बाय थैंक यू वेरी मच ओके बाय बाय